All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you my predictions for the future of the Apple Silicon Ultra Processor, the Mac Studio, and the Mac Pro. Now, when I say predictions, I am clearly saying to you, I am guessing at all of this. However, and to be truthful, there's absolutely nobody on YouTube who is doing the same thing that I'm doing who isn't guessing at the future of any of these things. And I dare say that outside of a handful of people within certain departments at Apple, probably not many people at Apple truly know what the future for these things are either. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is just quickly go up to speed as to where I think we're going to be before the end of this year. And then I'll kind of backpedal and talk about a couple of other things which is going to lead us up to that point. So right now, we are on the M3 Ultra processor, which right now is the most powerful Apple Silicon processor. And it is going to be a very good processor. However... I believe that we are going to see the next Ultra processor within this year, at the very latest, early next year. But I'm talking like no later than nine months' time for the next Ultra processor. And possibly it might come within the next six months, and that will be going into the Mac Pro. So at that point, we are going to have either an M4 Ultra, or an M5 Ultra. Now, Apple have already said not to be expecting an Ultra chip within every single series of like every M series release and stuff like that. That may have been them hinting that the Ultra will now come out for M5. But regardless of whether Apple are trying to like, you know, throw red herrings here and there, which wouldn't surprise me, um, we're definitely going to see an Ultra before nine months is up and done and at that point that ultra is going to be either m4 or m5 so let's just pretend that this happens in six months time well in six months time we're going to have a studio with m3 ultra we're going to have a pro with let's call it m5 ultra for now just for argument's sake so m3 ultra m5 ultra now at that point those two processors are going to be defined by their processing power with the M5 Ultra obviously having a lot more advantages over the M3 Ultra. Now, <clears throat> at that point, you know, it could be argued that that should be the state of play anyway, where the Mac Pro is definitely a more powerful computer compared to the studio, considering that you spend a lot more money on a Pro. And I totally agree with that. I agree that the Mac Pro should be the flagship and should have the most powerful processor in it. However, what I disagree with is that Apple introduced an M3 Ultra, which in my opinion has become an, a disruptor processor. And when I say disruptor processor, I believe it has only been brought out so that Apple can somewhat, dare I say, nobble the performance of the studio so that they can artificially inflate the processing power of their next Mac Pro. So all of this comes at the expense of the studio as far as I'm concerned, which is something that I was mentioning in a previous video. So let's just pretend that in six months' time, that's when this swap over happens, or it could be nine months at the latest. We are definitely going to have the Pro with a more powerful processor than the Studio, then at that point, it's highly likely that when there is an update to the Ultra processor, that the Studio and the Pro both get released on the same day for future releases, only because we then have that true definition between the process and power between them. Because don't forget, if after that point, the next processor was, say, M6 Ultra, then at that point, Apple could easily pump out M5 Ultra for the studio and then go M6 Ultra for the Pro. And then they could do that on the same day and, like I say, keep a cycle going then. However, and once again, I just want to like impress upon people that I believe that the introduction of the M3 Ultra was absolutely Apple's way to cover up a previous mistake, which was to have released the Pro having the same processor as the studio when... You know, nobody was expecting to pay twice as much money for a Pro or near enough twice as much money and only get the same processing power as what was in the studio. So this is where I'm going to start backpedaling now. So when Apple brought out the Pro in the... I mean, obviously the Pro was being in their late range for a very long time, but when they reintroduced the Pro to the Apple Silicon series... It was brought out with the processor inside it being exactly the same processor that was in the much cheaper studio. 
Now, the only difference really was like, you know, you got a big fancy case with PCIe expandability, which wasn't that good because there was a lot of people out there who had already had like a lot of PCIe interface cards and stuff who couldn't put them inside of a Pro. So that like that one big difference was kind of debatable as to how useful it was but basically we had two computers one was nearly twice the cost of the other and the both of them at best could like only have the same processing capabilities so in a nutshell apple i think screwed up with that one and pissed off a whole bunch of people because people you know did and should have expected more from the pro so moving forward we do have to have that readdressed. You know, I'm not sitting here saying like, you know, oh, well, the studio should always have the most powerful processor in. I totally agree, even though I would never buy a Pro. I, it's the, they're of no use to me. But the Pro should definitely always have the most powerful processor in it, but not at the expense of the studio owners who have supported the Ultra processor up to this point. So what I'm saying is, is that Apple have brought out the old M3 Ultra very specifically so that they could stagger the growth of the studio so that the next pro actually looks a lot better than what it really should be or and actually well, it, i'll get to this point the, the pro should be even better to be honest but what i'm saying is the m3 ultra is designed to go into a studio it is a short-lived processor as far as like you know how long it is going to be the most powerful processor and then when the next pro comes out that is going to have the next ultra processor in it and then at that point we have the clear definition between the processing levels between the two computers themselves the studio and the pro but it has all been artificially done by apple now at that point let's just pretend that the next processor let's call it m5 ultra let's just say that that goes into the pro and we've got the m3 ultra in the studio well from that point Anytime there's a new refresh of the processor, say we go to M6, and this is what I'm saying about the whole cycle thing, the M6 then would have an Ultra go into a Pro, and then the previous M5 Ultra would then go into the studio, and then at that point, both of those computers can then start cycling on like you know a periodic basis, whether that's 12 months, 18 or 24, doesn't matter. But at least both of those computers can then be released on the same day, and Apple is safe in knowing that the Pro is always going to be more powerful than the studio, and obviously give like you know pro owners or users you know the reason why to buy one because it is going to be the most powerful but like i keep saying don't forget this is all done at the expense of the studio users because right now whatever the next like most powerful ultra is whether that is m4 or m5 later this year that should by rights have gone into the studio and what apple should have done was to was to have increased the process and power capabilities of the pro by putting in a more powerful processor so let me just talk a little bit about that so at one point we were hearing last year and it maybe even into this year that we might have seen an extreme processor well regardless of what the processor's name was uh, basically we were looking at a processor which was essentially twice the power of an ultra now if apple had have brought out one of those then at that point there would have been no problem putting in the very latest ultra into the studio and then this extreme or whatever it is could then definitely go into a pro now at that point let's just pretend that these were m4 so we've got m4 ultra and m4 extreme for want of a better description for the name so both of those processors come out on the exact same day one goes in the studio as in the m4 ultra and then the m4 extreme goes in the pro now at that point that would have been the best thing ever because we would have had a massive difference in process and power for those who want to spend all the extra money for a pro but the studio users would be all up to date on the most current version of the ultra then at that point when apple starts cycling like their refreshes for both the ultra and the extreme they could do them on the exact same day so both the studio and the pro would come out the same day with the new versions and that whole cycle could go on for as long as apple want to do that 
However, there's another thing we have to consider here, and that is that right now, because the M3 Ultra has been thrown into the equation, it doesn't mean that we are always going to be on a similar cycle to whatever the Pro goes to, as to whatever the Studio goes to. And if the Pro does indeed get an M5 Ultra, that's going to mean that the studio will always be two series behind as far as ultras are concerned. So as we can see here, my prediction is more about... It's, well, it's basically, it's a criticism. It's a massive criticism as to the way Apple have gone about introducing the Pro when they did and they shouldn't have done it. And then what they've done, they've got themselves into a pickle over it and then decided to make the studio owners suffer for this. Now, none of this is to say that the studios, and especially the one right now with the M3 Ultra, that's not to say it's not going to be a powerful computer. It obviously is, and it will be a powerful computer in two years, three years' time if you bought one today. The problem is, as far as I'm concerned, is that we should have expected more from the next Ultra chip going into a studio and we quite clearly haven't had that anyway i think what i've done here is to describe and explain what i think the future is here but it is a future as far as i'm concerned which is a bit of a mess and it is something that apple themselves have got them you know they've done this to themselves but unfortunately it's us who suffer for this the end user and i dare say that the biggest losers in all of this are those people who have been buying into the studio since m1 and have been updating and going along with the studio as far as i'm concerned apple have really let down the studio community because if it wasn't for those people then the ultra chip would not have been something that apple would have seen much sense in listen i'm going to cut myself off right now because i can feel this getting really heated in my head and i'm starting to get quite angry about the whole thing and this will only lead on to me just ranting like a maniac and probably swearing all over the place which i don't want to do on this channel because i've got a another channel that I can swear on but the bottom line is here is that I just believe that Apple have basically crapped on the studio community so all those people who have really helped to like you know show Apple that the ultra processor is a really viable processor because the amount of people who committed to the studio platform I just basically think Apple have shit on these people full stop, do you know what I mean? And what they've done is to use them and like basically abuse them with the M3 Ultra chip just so that they could artificially create this gap that they need for the Pro when that gets released next. And don't get me wrong, as far as I'm concerned, the M3 Ultra is definitely a powerful processor. But, you know, whatever that next Ultra is, that is what the studio users should have been getting. And there should have been something different for the Pro computer and there would have been if Apple had gone about this all properly. Anyway, I've said enough. If anybody agrees with what I've said, let me know in the comments. If you disagree, let me know why, or let me know what your theories are about the future of, like, you know, the Ultra, Apple Silicon, the Studio, and also the Pro. Anyway, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care, and goodbye now.